The JLTV also has a Allison 2500 special purpose transmission that's installed on it. It runs a two speed automatic to the drivetrain. The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV, is a U.S. military, specifically the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps, and U.S. Special Operations Command program to partially replace the Humvee with a family of more survivable vehicles with larger payload. The development of JLTV is initiated by the Army and the Marine Corps as a successor to the high-mobility multi-wheel vehicle, which has been in service since 1985. JLTV construction started in October 2008, where three industry teams received awards for the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle Technology Development Phase. The Army released a request for proposal for the JLTV's Engineering Manufacturing Development EMD phase in January 2012, which then awarded the EMD contracts to M General, Lockheed Martin Corporation, and Oshkosh Corporation in August 2012. Furthermore, the Army awarded Oshkosh a $6.7 billion low-rate initial production contract with eight options in August 2015 to acquire the first 16,901 vehicles and authorized JLTV full-rate production. Then, in order to free up funds for other Army modernization priorities, plans for a program reduction were made in the fiscal year 2021 and extend the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle Procurement by three years until 2042. The Army has also stated that it plans to complete a follow-on contract to be awarded in the fiscal year 2022 intended to split the procurement between Oshkosh and a new competitor in order to reduce costs. Talking about its technical details, only limited information has been provided by either the U.S. Army or Oshkosh. The tactical vehicle is built around Oshkosh's TAK-4I independent suspension system and has the variable adjustable ride height type with up to 20 inches of wheel travel. With its suspension-aided egress system capability levels side-to-side -side and front-to-rear on slopes when selected by the operator. The front and rear suspension height can also be independently controlled for ship and transportability. For its motive power, it is provided by a digitally controlled Gale Banks Engineering 866 TVA diesel with its power output is 340 horsepower and fitted by an Allison 2500 SP6 speed fully automatic transmission. Moreover, the vehicle has been designed to comply with the U.S. Army's long-term armor strategy following an A or B kit principle. The A kit is fitted on the production line and is a combination of a limited amount of armoring in difficult to access areas of the vehicle, together with a significant amount of armor installation attachments and required support structures. Meanwhile, the B kit is installed in the field on an as required basis. Two soldiers can install B kit armor in five hours, and an 800 pound RPG protection kit can be installed in two hours at field level maintenance, completed by the crew within 30 minutes. Additionally, this tactical vehicle has an automatic fire extinguishing system to protect the crew cabin, in which the fuel tanks are mounted externally and shielded by its structure, and each crew seat has a combined seat and blast restraint device. The joint tactical vehicle is also fitted with a diagnostic monitoring system that can monitor the fuel, air intake, engine cooling, transmission, energy storage, power generation and vehicle speed, among other systems, and will electronically inform the operator of any equipment faults. For additional information, the only weight-related data officially released includes a gross vehicle weight of 10,266 pounds, with payload for the two-door variant, which is quoted as 2,318 kilograms, and payload for the four-door variant, which is quoted as 1,590 kilograms. In regards to its mobility, the vehicle was capable of traveling for three miles cross-country. It can operate in altitudes from minus 500 to 12,000 feet and maintain full mission capability in temperatures from minus 40 to 125 Fahrenheit degrees. In addition, it also capable of traveling 350 miles on paved roads at 35 miles per hour or 300 miles in operational terrain on a single tank of GP8 fuel 
as well as acceleration from 0 to 30 miles per hour in 9.7 seconds on dry and hard terrain, and the ability to ford 60 inches of salt water without a fording kit in both directions while maintaining contact with the ground. Other tactically driven mobility requirements include a threshold 27-foot turning radius and the ability to climb 24-inch vertical obstacles in forward and reverse. This joint light vehicle needs to drive off an 18-inch vertical step at 15 miles per hour and sustain no mechanical damage which will be capable of traversing a 20-degree V-ditch that is 25 feet wide at an approach angle of 45 degrees. The tactical vehicle can also jump a 6-inch parallel curve at 15 miles per hour and traverse a 20-foot flight of stairs at 5 miles per hour. Moreover, the vehicle is transportable on all classes of ocean-going transport ships with minimal disassembly, which is prepared in 30 minutes for transport by aircraft, maritime prepositioning force ships or rail. For its variants, the GLTV program has evolved significantly throughout various development phases and milestones. The variants are capable of performing armament carrier, utility, command and control, ambulance, reconnaissance, and a variety of other tactical and logistic support roles, which include four seat variants consisting of heavy guns carrier, general purpose, and close combat weapon carrier, and two seat variants consisting utility. Lastly, let's take a look at the future of JLTV procurement. The Army's current modernization strategy is primarily focused on six modernization priorities, which do not include the joint light tactical vehicle. The Marine Corps downsized for its March 2024 design initiative and adoption of a more expeditionary posture, possibly requiring fewer joint lighter vehicles. The original GLTV procurement plans for the two major service customers might no longer be relevant. Despite the Army's intention to save money by competing a follow-on contract with another vendor by the fiscal year 2022, slower production rates and longer procurement processes can increase the costs. In addition, a mixed fleet of vehicles with different versions of the JLTV produced by another vendor could result in additional operations and maintenance costs. Taken collectively, these concerns may warrant the Department of Defense and policymakers looking into the future of joint light tactical vehicle procurement in order to evaluate the current need and whether actions to extend procurement will result in higher programmatic costs. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey everyone, my name is Sergeant First Class Corey Ray. I'm a Unit Master Driver with the 353 Civil Affairs Command. And today I'm excited to show you guys our new vehicle that we just got uh, issued. It's the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, also known as the JLTV. All right guys, this is I'm sure the moment that you've all been waiting for, the inside of the JLTV. The vehicle was designed with the soldier in mind. Everything from the Camelback cutout to the way that the seat goes up and down to fit every soldier in the Army Reserves. One of my favorite features in the new JLTV is the digital display unit. It's a Windows-based system that gives the soldier total control over the vehicle. They're able to view temperatures, uh, pressures, and the camera views for the front and the back backup cameras. Okay guys, this is the new JLTV engine. It has a 6.6 .6 liter turbo diesel that's capable, capable of producing 340 foot-pounds of torque and 660 horsepower. If you guys look, we have the turbo right up in this area that helps the vehicle get up to the maximum speed that it can get up to, which is 76 miles an hour. As you can see, we have up armored windows and doors on the exterior of the vehicle. They're capable of withstanding small arms fire. And since all of the controls are on the inside of the vehicle due to the seals, the vehicle is capable of going through different operational statuses, from fording mode to operational status to tie down, and it even drops into a loading status. The JLTV's also got extra functions on the back of the vehicle as well. It's got an installed rear backup camera that's gonna assist with safety and ground guiding while you're in the motor pool. Uh, speaking of safety, we also have a black box that's installed in the back of the vehicle that is going to 
record statistics and give the command analysis in case of accidents or rollovers. The JLTV also has an Allison 2500 special purpose transmission that's installed on it. It runs a two speed automatic to the drivetrain. Thanks for joining us today, guys. The 353 is excited to have these brand new vehicles in our fleet, and you can look forward to phenomenal civil affairs training and operations in the very near future. Feel free to drop your comments below and stay tuned for videos to come.